Do you know the only time when the view becomes mildly entertaining? Well, it's when someone on the panel dares disagree, eventually devolving the show into a war of words. Something similar happened just this week when the panel tried desperately to implicate Donald Trump as an insurrectionist for the events of January 6th. After disregarding even the idea that he can contest being taken off the ballot in Colorado and Maine in front of a court, this was a segment where Whoopi Goldberg and Sonny Hostin in particular demonstrated almost a surprising lack of understanding of the Constitution. So let's get into it. They say it's going to be up to the U.S. Supreme Court to decide if the Constitution does indeed bar him from running. Even though the Constitution says, listen, if you do this you kind of stuff, run. you can't run. But apparently we always have to recheck with this fool because <laughs> every time he does something, they say, oh, well, they, they didn't mean him. But I they mean, did mean him. Yeah, speak you know, to it. Speak it. Speak to him. I'm a speak, speak to it, girl. It. Speak it. You know, the thing is, um, this is black letter constitutional law and... The, section 3 of the 14th Amendment basically says if you participated in an insurrection against this country, you may not hold office. I think those first few sentences reveal just how much Whoopi truly understands or even respects the Constitution. The Constitution doesn't say this kind of stuff. Because what counts as an insurrection and what doesn't isn't just a term that's up in the air and up for grabs by anyone. It contains precise definitions that have survived almost one and a half century since the 14th Amendment was written. Now, of course, the debate is not just whether it's courts or the voters that decide who should be on the ballot but also an internal debate in the legal system between whether the constitutional writing should be interpreted as it was written or adapted to a modern lens instead. And that is exactly where a gap starts to open up. It's a disagreement between two political sides that obviously no other body in the country is able to resolve than the Supreme Court itself. And yes, Whoopi, that's where the role of America's highest court comes in. Even more importantly, it's not you or I that decide if January 6th qualifies as a Trump-led insurrection. It's the courts and the judges that look at the events under the scrutiny of the legal lens. Claim to be originalists, textualists, meaning what was written in the Constitution at that time is the law that continues. I believe differently. I believe that the law is, the Constitution is a living, living and breathing yeah. document. They don't believe that. So if that is the case on the floor, when they were debating it, someone said, let me call the senator's attention to the words of hold any office, civil or military, under the United States. That means the president who held an office cannot be on the ballot because he was involved. But and not only involved in insurrection, he caused that insurrection. You know what's most intriguing? Despite being a lawyer herself, Sonny Hostin would do well to understand that contextualist interpretations of the law and the Constitution cannot be a one-off incident. They set a precedent for the next time that your political opponents interpret laws in some other context. So no, the Constitution isn't a living and breathing document in that it can be walked to whichever side you want. It's a legal monument that we all look up to and adhere to, whether you're Republican or Democrat. That's also what Ron DeSantis said recently, criticizing the idea that it can be the executive branch to decide whether Trump should be on the ballot rather than the legislative branch with the Supreme Court. It's the judges that bridge the gap in interpretation, not partisan bureaucrats. I think they should leave it to the voters, oh, but I, no. think the I think the division this will cause, because what will happen is that martyrdom will be one step more. We have a nation well, that doesn't believe in, yeah. in democracy, doesn't believe in the voting. Everyone that loses says it was rigged and failed. I think this will create a vision, a visual to people that don't, that this was a rigged no, election. I don't agree. I, don't, I do. I think that the law will stand and so people very, should follow the law. If that is if the law listen, the Supreme Court If you're not going to follow an amendment, then why don't we have Taylor Swift but I take a different think it's just And you know what? Situations like that are exactly what the architects of the Constitution actually foresaw. In both cases of the interpretation, whether it'll be contextualist or originalist, 
there is a risk that the document's flexibility or rigidity can be used for political victimization. That's why it was never supposed to be in partisan political hands in the first place. Because who decides whether what happened on January 6th actually constitutes a call for insurrection and hijacking the government? Not you and I, not the ladies at The View, and not even Trump's political allies or detractors. And if this country were to ever set a precedent where politicians started using their interpretations of the law to go after one another, that could very quickly descend into a chaos that takes down democracy itself. As it stands now, the Democratic Party would do well to understand that leaving the law to the courts is best even for them. Taking him off the ballots like this will only make him a political martyr and end up fueling his narrative for his base. I'm very conflicted on this as a conservative because I tend toward being more of an originalist. I worry about two things. When we look at the law, you think of the precedent that it sets. So say that this ends up holding. Donald Trump becomes, if he, God forbid, becomes mm -hmm. president about this time mm -hmm. next year, he could weaponize that same yep. ruling to yep. keep Democrats off the ballot. In the same way that he says, Joe Biden is a threat to democracy, yep. he's going to say this Democrat engaged this is what I mean. It's I'm going to be a slippery slope. Then, well, so then we are operating from a place of fear. Because if he has secretaries of state or he has a, appointed judges that he appointed who are loyal to him, they will weaponize the same decision. Alyssa Farrah Griffin at least understands the risk, but you know what's funny? Even this small panel can't seem to agree on the definition and interpretation of a legal provision. And yet, people like Whoopi Goldberg and Joy Behar think the entire country can reach that consensus without introducing political instability? It's a naive and utopian political lens that gets us nowhere, and as Alyssa said, can actually work to widen the divide and polarization when a non-political entity like the Supreme Court is not made party to the matter.